Okay, boys and girls, I'm hoping this is working currently. Um, you should have received in your email a copy of the system analysis and design sheet. Um, and it's double sided, it's what we did in class. Uh, we've walked through it step by step to try to figure out exactly how you construct a DFD and figure out how the CRUD system works. Now we're going to start with page one. On page one, you'll see that it has a um, well, background. We're basically constructing a data flow diagram to help model the requirements of a college course registration system. Woo! And then the information with the sub within the subsystems has five different categories that all say DBase. Obviously, this means databases, which I remember, and I imagine you remember, looks a little bit like this when you're drawing them. Cigar, or very bad drawing of penis. Um, hopefully this won't get too public because Anyway, um, <laughs> so yeah, there's five of them. So now we already know we got five databases. There's some details. I recommend reading all of this, but I'm just going to quickly try to go through it because I can't read it for you. On the other side, we have known uses of the subsystem. Now, these are basically events or actions, if you will, something that the subsystem can do. Um, so we have a student can use the subsystem to enroll in a course got that, enrolling. A student can pay for the course. Pay. Okay. Interesting. Not exactly sure what we're going to do with all this, but let's see. Now, what was the next step? Ah, oh, yes, I remember now. Sean had us construct an event table. Well, specifically, an event table for our course management subsystem. We just to organize all this stuff. So these two things went in here as events that could happen. And then he also had a data and things table. Under this went the student info, student registration, course info, course enrollment, and the courses waiting list. Obviously, all data. Woo, data. And from this, we took all this. Oh, goodness, now we have an idea. We're going to construct a CRUD table. Woo! Sorry, I'm rushing through this. Don't want this file to be too huge and taking forever to upload, and you guys won't even be able to watch it or anything because it'll never be done. So, for our next activity, we're going to construct the CRUD table. Yay, hey, CRUD. Okay, how does this CRUD work? Well, up here we've got our data. And down here we got our events. What kind of events? Well, we've got the enroll in course. And we've got the pay. Zoom. Okay, now up here we've got our different data categories. We've got the student info. We've got the student uh, registration. <laughs> we've got the course info. We've got the course enroll. And the course waiting list. Now, I'm not sure if you remember what CRUD stands for, but the C was create, the R was read, the U was update, and delete, D was delete. Pretty cool. Pretty snazzy. Pretty awesome. <coughs> yes. Anyway, uh, on to the next part. Uh, this part took a little while, so I'm going to see if I can try to do it in kind of justice. We basically looked at the different categories in the known uses of the subsystem. So we had, um, let's see, a student can use the subsystem to enroll in the course. Given a student ID and course ID, the student system first checks to see if student has re required prerequisites. Okay, let's see. 
Uh, how's that go? Course info. Okay, so I think what this basically means is that it has to read, see if the student, given the student's ID and the course ID, so student's ID, student's registration, C, create, and the course ID, Trying to remember which one of these it was. Okay, I have to flip over to the other side. <laughs> uh, let's see. Course enrollment. Stores information about enrollment in the course, like the number of sections of the course, number of students presently enrolled in the course, maximum number of seats, all stored in there. Course info database stores info about course, like course name, course ID, course number, and course prerequisites. Now it says, given the student ID, first check to see if the student has their required requisites. Okay. So that would be C info, because that's where the prerequisites are stored. What's it going to do? It's going to read C info and see if the student has what it needs. Okay, so it's doing the read. Now let's see. After reading that, student doesn't, the system informs them, forms them and stops registration. Okay. Oh goodness. Yes, this process did take quite a long time. Um, I apologize for the time it's probably going to take. Okay, what do we got here? I can already fill all these in, thankfully, except, to be honest, I've kind of forgotten some of what these do, which is probably a bad sign since I'm attempting to teach you, and I have to remember for tomorrow. Uh, annoying process of reading. Okay, so I'm on the spot, feeling a little nervous, gonna get past it. I'm given the student ID, the course ID, the system first checks to see if the student has required prerequisites. If the student doesn't, the system informs them and stops further processing. Okay, so, create student. We're going to move on for now. We're going to come back if we need to. Um, to be honest, I recommend doing this on your own and thinking through the process. It's a pain in the ass, but it's kind of something that has to be done. You will see the end result of what all of this ends up becoming before the end of this video. So you will have an idea if you're doing it right. Um, or at least right according to Sean. Let's hope that that was right. Actually, you should have a picture of the board that had the updated list of where all the cruddy parts went, which should be very useful. Okay, back onto my attempt at creating a video. By the way, I'm not wearing pants right now. Isn't that great? Um, let's see. And I'm getting distracted and slightly sleepy and want ice cream. Uh, <laughs> next, the system checks to see if there's actually room for the student in one of the course second ones. Uh, in one section of the course. So it's going to check to see if there's room for the students in a section of the course. Where does it check for room? Course enrollment database. Because it says that that's where the number of sections in the course are and the number of students presently enrolled. Which means it's going to have to read that. Okay, so we've got that part down. All this does actually have a use, by the way. It takes a while, but there's a purpose to this madness. Okay. I'll have to go back to the other part at some point, where it says if the student doesn't, in the original part where we started, if the student doesn't, the system informs them to stop further processing. So that was an earlier part. Um, I suppose that would be if the student doesn't actually have the information, like the prerequisites. Now, if I came over there and came over here, 
I'm going to put a temporary update there. I'm not sure that's going to stay there. I might delete that in a bit, but it says it informs them. Maybe that's what it does. Okay, back to the second part we started. If there is room, then the student is enrolled in the course and informed. Oh, okay. So yeah, um, for the second part, it also says the student would be enrolled in the course and informed. Now, if the student is enrolled in the course, that means we're going to have to have a C over here, because it says that that database holds information like the number of students currently enrolled. Mm. I suppose that would actually be an update. I'm trying to figure out if it actually has the data of each student. Number of sections in the course, the number of students presently enrolled in each section, maximum number of students allowed in each section, all starting here. Hmm. Well, I guess it would be updating it. And it might also be creating it. Uh, I'm making that small because I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, that's how I do it. Okay. Now for the next part. I hope this is actually recording properly, otherwise this is going to be a real pain in the butt. Okay. If there is no room in the course for the student, the system then checks to see if there is room in the wait course's waiting list, which is an obvious read. At least I think so. Is there room in the course's waiting list? If there is room in the list, then the student is placed on the waiting list and informed. The idea creates, because the student's being put on the list and informed. Obvious create. Okay. If there is room in the list, uh, uh, if there is no room on the course or on the waiting list, the system informs the student. There's no room informs students. Uh, 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 uh. I think that might actually be updated again. Because telling the student you can't get on there. I think that'd be an update. I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be another one in here somewhere. Uh, I think I'm missing someone here, which is a good reason to actually go over this. Oh, I know what I'm missing. It checks to see if the student has the required prerequisites from earlier to see if he can actually enroll, which would be a read of what the student gave. Now, it also does the updating in regards to whether he's able to enroll or not, if he's on the waiting list or not. So then we have this part, CRU. Now we come over here and do course enrollment. Um, I suppose if he's being enrolled in it. I'm figuring there's already a number in there. Hmm. I'm going to quickly bring up that picture, actually from the class. Not sure if this is actually showing up in the video. If it is, that's pretty awesome. Uh, do, 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 where was Sean's card table? Here we go. Okay, so he had a C and R and U, an R, and then a cra cra and both his other ones. Okay, so he does believe that it actually creates it, and he also believes it actually updates it. So that would be creating the entry of the student in here, and then updating it with the number of students currently in there. And then with the waiting list, creating it, reading it, and I suppose there would be the updating if there was actually any space left anymore. So it would be updating the waiting list to see if there's any space. Yeah, let's read what the date course waiting list database is. Stores information about students, their ID numbers. Okay, so yeah, that would definitely be a crate. We're waiting to get into a specific course and have been put on a waiting list. 
the database also keeps track of the maximum number of students allowed in a specific course. Okay, that would definitely be an update. Okay, so yeah, that definitely makes sense. Sweet. Yay, it's good to make sense. Okay, now there's another part to this. We've still got our pay area. Now I'm just going to check to see how much time I've got left on this video. I think I'm going to stop here and then start it up again after this and continue the video so it's in smaller chunks. That would be a bit.